Hello drone friends, this is Alan at UAV Coach and Drone Pilot Ground School. Welcome to our Drone Weekly News Roundup. Before we get into this week's stories, I want to share a few quick updates. Uh, first, a big congrats to Andy Aloko, one of our amazing drone flight training instructors down in Miami. Uh, he's been training for us here at UAV Coach since 2018 when we first opened up our hands-on flight training program. Well, Andy just trained his 100th student, and Judy, who runs our flight training program, fabricated this drone trophy for him. Tipping our hats to you this week, Andy. It's been so great working with you over the last few years. Okay, another quick update, and this is a YouTube update. In our most viewed YouTube video so far, we share some training exercises for new drone pilots who are just learning how to fly more confidently and professionally. And boy, oh boy, we just crossed over half a million views on that video. We have put so much work into our YouTube channel over the last year, and I'm so proud of our team for all the positive comments we got with this video. Okay, one more update, this one directly from the FAA about the Lance program. Basically, how the majority of drone pilots get airspace authorization when needing to fly in controlled airspace. You open up an app like uh, Aloft or AirMap or UA Sidekick, uh, and you can get almost instant airspace authorization in most cases. So this program rolled out in 2018, and the FAA just announced that they have issued over 1 million authorizations. Quite an impressive milestone. It actually used to be a pain in the butt to get controlled airspace authorization. I waited 106 days for clearance here in Nashville back in 2017, but now it takes about four to seven minutes uh, in most cases. Lance has been a great step forward for the US drone industry. So tipping our hats to the FAA this week as well. Okay, enough of the updates. Let's get into the stories for this week. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and I wanted to unpack the TFR, or temporary flight restriction, that the FAA issued for the big game. Some of you might know there's already a standing TFR when it comes to big sporting events like NFL football games, and under normal conditions, flying your drone in or around an NFL stadium is prohibited starting one hour before and ending one hour after the scheduled event. The Super Bowl is a little different. Uh, the FAA has issued a separate TFR for the area surrounding the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, uh, where the game is going to take place this Sunday. So here are the details. Interestingly enough, between 10 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. PST, there are restricted operations in the area surrounding the SoFi Stadium with drone operations prohibited for one nautical mile and up to 3,000 feet in altitude. Now between 2.30 and 8.30, uh, those numbers change. So you can't fly uh, within a 30 nautical mile radius of SoFi Stadium and up to 18,000 feet in altitude. So those not in compliance with these restrictions could face drone confiscation, uh, civil penalties that exceed $30,000, and potential criminal prosecution. So all you drone pilots in the Inglewood, California area, let those batteries charge on Sunday. Uh, enjoy the game, eat some wings, watch the commercials and halftime show, but, but uh, no, no drone flying, please. Next up, for years now, DJI has denied that it receives funding from the Chinese government. But new reporting from the Washington Post reveals that the drone giant has actually received funding from several state-backed investors. Reporters have determined that four investment bodies tied to the Chinese government have invested in DJI over the last few years. Most notably, one of the investors tied to the government is a state asset manager who has pledged to play a key role in promoting partnerships between private enterprises and the Chinese military. Now, DJI continues to be the market leader in consumer drones here in the U.S. and around most of the world. Uh, but here in the U.S., with the Department of Defense's blue UAS lists and the Defense Authorization Act, which limits the use of government funds to buy drones from select foreign countries, we may see a shift in the drone maker's position and DJI's position in the market. Uh, might be an interesting couple of years. We'll see. Okay, lastly, a new law proposed in the U.S. Senate seeks to criminalize a range of illegal drone operations. These would include flying for clearly criminal purposes like using a drone strapped with explosives to stage a terrorist attack, using a drone to traffic contraband like drugs or weapons, uh, or using a drone to intentionally damage infrastructure. Other negligent drone operations include interfering with ongoing wildfire or first responder operations. Uh, the Drone Act of 2022 is a drafted law that is the bipartisan creation of Senators Bill Cassidy, Mark Kelly, and Chuck Grassley. The current law does not cover specific types of dangerous drone activity, which the bill would expand on and make them punishable with a $250,000 fine or prison sentence. All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. I hope you have a fun and safe Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest drone news. Uh, remember to check out the links below to read more about any of these stories. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, as always, to all of you drone pilots out there, blue skies and safe flying.